Also, Jonathan Miller, who directed this piece, with, for me, thank God, I had someone who knew the, knew the play very well, knew it well enough to be naughty with it and uh, not be awed by it and to be irreverent at the, in the right way towards it, uh, who had an enormous knowledge of the piece. Um, thought that I should, and we both agreed it actually at the same time, that, he, that Lear, by that stage in the play, uh, having spent most of his time on the heath through that stormy passage in the, in, in the middle acts, would have possibly come off that heath having had a little stroke. There's absolutely no reason to believe that, that that's wrong because a man of his got thrown against the buffeting weather and the freezing could have easily had a stroke. Uh, he was so self-tormented in that section of the play. So we decided to slur a little bit on the voice. And just, just to slightly suggest that perhaps he had a stroke, a stroke, which made it quite riveting, I think, to mm -hmm. suddenly say, I don't, I don't know you, but aren't you, you you're awfully familiar. So it had a much more real old man, uh, not being sentimental, but I think it, so you save it all for, he said, Cordelia. You save it till that line, till that word. Right. Everything else you play against and then let him have it with, could it be, it couldn't be Cordelia, could it? For I'm mainly ignorant what place this is. Yeah. And all the skill I have remembers not these garments. Nor I know not. Yeah, he's just outside. discovering, and all the, all the skill I have. Oh my God, I don't. I remember not my garments. I don't. I don't understand. I, what, what the fuck am I? Who am I? Yes. Do not laugh at me. Uh, don't laugh at me, but for as I am a man, I think I this think lady, this lady, to be yeah. my child, Cordelia. To be my child, Cordelia. Yeah. That's the first time he's hit the nail on the head. Right. So it's it's um. It's a wonderful trip, that, and if you just can postpone the, the touching moment just for the, that one word, Cordelia, you're away. So it's, it's a discovery, and it's not, it's not self-pitying, nor is it reminiscent. You don't want a reminiscent tone. You want a discovery. It's happening right now, tone. I think what was so refreshing about it when you did it, it was the antithesis of romantic acting. Yeah, and that the was... The reality of the stroke and the reality of yeah. the, the faded. Well, that was Jonathan, you know, too. I must give him credit for, for keeping me in, in that vein all through the play. He really charted my course medically. You see, he is a doctor, he is a surgeon, and he is an anthropologist. And the closest, I think the closest thing to a real genius I've ever worked with, or Jonathan is an extraordinary creature. Jonathan Miller of Beyond the Fringe. Yes, who has all those other things. Yeah. Um, and, and what kind of notes would he give you as a director? Well, he always, <laughs> they were always very funny, you know, because he's got an enormous sense of humor. But when we first wanted to uh, do, I wanted to work with him again, I wanted to do Volpone with him and get some terrific actor to play in Moscow, Moscow or or vice versa, I would play Moscow and we'd get another actor to And he said, uh, I, because I thought Miller would be perfect for that period of, you know, he understands that mad period of Elizabethan writing. So, and he said, all right, all right, all right, all right, let's do it. And then, just as we were about to announce, they were about to announce it at Stratford, he called me up and he said, oh, uh, Chris Vaughan, I don't, I don't want to do Bald Pony. <sighs> no, no, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. It's just, it, there's, there's a huge gaps in the middle of the play. I, I don't know what to do with them. I mean, just endless. I mean, and all the fun goes out of it and all these endless plots. And it's, it's a very poor show, very poor show. I don't, and you shouldn't waste your time doing it. I said, but I want to do a great comedy. He said, well, then do Lear. It's one of the funniest plays I've ever written. I, <laughs> I said, no, 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 you should do Leah now before you're too friggin' old. Do it now. Well, pony's not important. So I said, okay. 
And I just turned down Peter Hall's offer to, to, to do King Lear. I didn't want, didn't want to do Lear. And then I said, well, what am I going to do? What am I going to tell Peter Hall, for Christ's sake? And Jonathan said, well, tell, well, write him a Pierre Foyer a letter. He said, he called him Pierre, Pierre Foyer. Foyer, Peter Hall. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, and we went with the funniest play ever written. Well, he, 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 he brought out a great deal of the ironic humor in King Lear, of course. He, he did wonderful wonders. The line from Regan after he Lear storms off of the first act. Says, oh fool, I shall go mad, and rushes off into the storm. And, and she says, looking at the house, this house is little, she says. That was my whole point. <laughs> and of course, it brings down the house. It brings down the audience. The audience adore that. He, he picked out wonderful laughs that people didn't expect were in the play. And they were all legitimate. I saw a production of Measure for Measure of his early on, mid-70s at the National. And it was set in Vienna in 1885 or something. And it was so clear. Yeah, I know. It was so clear. Yeah. I went, oh, she's a nun. Oh. He's a bureaucrat. Uh, the yeah. clarity, and through the clarity, the, the power of the play came out. Yeah, and the same with The Merchant of Venice. Yes, I with, saw that uh, one as well. With Larry and um, yeah. Olivia Shylock, and wonderful, funniest prince of Aragon ever, Charles, what's his name? Oh, God, Charlie, nah, can't remember his name. Funniest, funniest scene I've ever seen, the picking of the caskets. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's drunk all the time, the man. He's can't find the, he can't find the cask. <laughs> it's, it's brilliant stuff. Jonathan has great humor and great wit, and <laughs> it's outrageous. And of course, you need that somebody like that to do a, an outrageous play like King Lear. And he wouldn't cut it though, and I think he's wrong there. But he's a purist. Suddenly, he becomes a purist for no reason at all. And you say, but Jonathan, it's, it's so long, you know. People don't have that. <sighs> their, their, their attention spans are so ghastly now. Don't, don't over, you know, over, overwhelm them with too many words. Please do cut that a little bit, that portion of the play where, oh, you just didn't want me to cut because you're not on stage. And I said, I said, yeah, that's right. I said they've lost because there's this huge long gap in the after Lear becomes mad. But it becomes another play altogether. It's the tragedy of Gloucester and the tragedy of Edmund and Edgar, for Christ's sake. And you have to sit in your dressing room for hours waiting to go back on as King Lear. Whatever happened to the protagonist, fellas? And what did and he by say? the time you get on, the audience has said, Oh, wait a minute. That must be Lear. <laughs> they came to see King Lear and, oh, Christ, we'd almost forgotten about him. And it's a bit late. And you have to bring them all up again with you and follow the Lear story suddenly. It's a very strange. What did he say? He said, oh, no, I think you're quite wrong, you're quite wrong, quite wrong. Well, of course, he was probably right to keep it. He'd cut a little bit of it, but not much. Right. Uh, the 19th century actor, that's when you want to be a 19th century actor. I mean, they were merciless with it. The stars in those days, oh, I'm not going to play King Lear if we have to sit there for that. What's going to happen to my line, my arc? What is going to happen to that? And they're quite right. So they cut, cut it to shreds. You know. So halfway, somewhere in between those the two reactions to, to Lear, it's a very difficult play to sustain. Very difficult, because you're your leading actor vanishes for such a long time.